Hello again, everybody. The topic of our discussion here is going to be myositis. Now, this is not super common in practice, but it gets tested very frequently for some reason. So it is something that you'll want to know. And it also helps because the way this typically presents is weakness. And you'll want to understand how to work up weakness because that is a common complaint. It just so happens that myositis is a rare cause of weakness. If you haven't had the chance yet, please consider subscribing to my Patreon. You can get there by clicking the link in the description of the video or on the i button on the upper right hand corner. I very much appreciate all the contributions I can get to help offset the cost of these videos. And I thank all those of you who have already donated. And definitely feel free to subscribe to my channel and you will get notifications every time I put a new video up, which I try to do eh, three or four or five times a week. Okay, so there are a number of causes of myositis. Um, you can see uh, some of these are definitely more common than others. I would say probably the most common cause of myositis, causing weakness and muscle pain to a certain degree, are the statins. So you put a patient on Crestor or something like that um, because they've got high LDL levels and they're 40 or whatever, and they come back a week later saying, I am so sore, I am so weak, I can barely get out of bed. It can be that bad. That is from the statin. That is super common. When we see these myositides, it can look something like that, okay? So there are a number of drugs that can do this, but the statins are probably the big one that you need to remember. And we always recommend that if someone starts a statin, also start CoQ10. There are a number of infectious causes, as you can see, um, and then there are these idiopathic causes, which we are going to talk about. So the idiopathic myositides, this is uh, polymyositis, dermatomyositis, and inclusion body myositis. There are others, but these are the three that get tested. These are autoimmune inflammatory diseases. Um, so look for an inflammatory picture. And it is of the skeletal muscle. So this affects muscle, but only skeletal muscles. So you're not going to have any issues with your heart, not, nothing like that. It is all skeletal muscle. It is relatively rare, but like I said, commonly tested. There is uh, a racial predilection towards blacks. There is a gender predilection towards women, um, but anyone can get this. Uh, the age of onset is sort of middle age, 45 to 60 years of age. Um, there is an increased incidence with other autoimmune diseases, so lupus and RA and stuff like that. And that goes for pretty much every autoimmune disorder. If you have one, you're more likely to get another. The best first diagnostic step is a CPK. You could add Eldelase onto that, but CPK is the big one. That is a mandatory test. Anytime somebody comes in and they say, Doc, I'm weak, CPK, every time, every time. If the CPK and Eldelase come back uh, elevated, then you move on to a biopsy. And that's absolutely essential to establish the diagnosis. This is a, a histopathological diagnosis. Okay, so these are the three we're going to talk about. Now, both polymyositis and dermatomyositis affect the proximal limb muscles. So they're going to have difficulty, for instance, getting up from a seated position. Use those thigh muscles uh, to do that. Uh, likewise, climbing the stairs or combing their hair. So you're using those shoulder muscles to get your hand over your head. So these are all symptoms of proximal muscle weakness. And as you can see, these are very important things to do. I mean, how do you go a day without climbing the stairs or getting up from sitting, sitting down, right? Um, so this is going to interfere with these people's uh, quality of life quite significantly. And so you can expect these patients to come in fairly early on during the course of their illness. Uh, so the symptoms, progressive weakness, problems with activities of daily life, uh, they may have constitutional features, but I wouldn't rely on that. Um, and because this is inflammatory, the symptoms may be worse in the morning and improve throughout the day. Like I said, best initial diagnostic test is creatine kinase levels. Eldolase is good to get alongside. These are muscles for inf muscle inflammation and damage. Sorry, markers for muscle inflammation and damage. EMG should also be ordered as part of your initial workup. So you're thinking something maybe muscular, skeletal muscle, never hurts to get an EMG. The most accurate test is muscle biopsy. This is the distribution. So this is what I would get for a workup, get a creatine kinase and eldolase, get LFT. Why? Uh, because remember uh, that LFTs come with 
uh, two enzymes, AST and ALT, and both of those happen to also be markers for muscle damage. So they're not just livers. We're not really, we're not worried about the liver here. It's just the liver function tests have some markers for muscle damage as well. EMG, like I said, and then uh, it helps to do a very uh, subtle workup for other autoimmune disorders. So get that ANA. Uh, SED rate can be helpful, CBC and BMP. And this is what you'll find. The creatine kinase will be elevated. Aldolase will be elevated. EMG will be abnormal. Do not worry about what the EMG is going to look like. At that point, you move on to your muscle biopsy. You can also get anti jo one antibodies. However, on CCS, that's not an option. I don't know why. It's a very um, well-recognized lab. But for some reason, that's not there. You should still know it, though. It could come up on a multiple choice question. And you'll get your diagnosis via muscle biopsy. Best initial therapy is systemic corticosteroids. So giving them oral prednisone every day, um, that will really, really help. If that alone is not effective, you can start a course of IVIG. Second line would be to add an immunosuppressant like methotrexate or azathioprine. Remember, if you're going to be giving methotrexate, you need to do a pregnancy test if this is a woman of reproductive age. That's really important. CCS is going to want you to know that. Some recommend starting steroids and immunosuppressants both at the same time immediately upon diagnosis, but that's controversial. Uh, the prognosis is good. Uh, there are some complications. Getting those anti jo one titers can help because that kind of gives you an idea about the prognosis. Management, prednisone, counsel about the side effects of medication, refer them off to physical therapy and make sure they're seeing the rheumatologist. Um, the only time you would need to admit these patients is if they uh, have dyspnea or dysphagia or they're just unable to move at all. Um, you would give IV prednisone and consider IVIG. Uh, remember that if you're going to put them on immunosuppressants like methotrexate, you need to make sure they're fully vaccinated because that is going to affect their uh, immune ability to respond to infections. I would recommend making sure everyone is fully vaccinated, but it's particularly important in these people. Dermatomyositis, not much to say. It is polymyositis with a rash. That's it. Everything else is the same. So the rashes, look for a heliotrope rash. That's a rash that kind of looks like a malar rash, but it's higher up. So it might be in the cheeks, but it's going to be around the eyes, eyelids, forehead, uh, but anywhere in sun exposed area. So be careful. Do not confuse it with a malar rash. Shawl sign is erythema over the shoulders and neck. Gotrin's papules uh, and Gotrin's rash is over the hands. Um, so diagnosis, same thing here. Okay, heliotrope rash, you can see it kind of has a malar distribution and that it's affecting the cheeks here, uh, but this is going to also affect the eyelids and we don't see that with the malar rash. This is the shawl sign here. You can see it's kind of in that distribution where you would wear a shawl. Um, now notice here, this is also in sun exposed areas. Um, so that's interesting. Gotrin's rash and papules, look for this kind of eczematous-like uh, rash um, over the uh, knuckles and the, uh, the joints of the fingers. Um, and then you can also see these papules. They tend to be hyperpigmented, so in a person of color, um, don't look for red, look for hyperpigmentation. Um, so here again, you see uh, the rash and then these papules here. All right. So workup is the same, findings are the same. The only difference with polymyositis is you can do a skin biopsy as well. But really this is, sorry, dermatomyositis. I don't know why I put that. Difference with dermatomyositis is you can do a skin biopsy as well, okay? But otherwise everything is pretty much the same. The findings are different, but for step two and three, you don't need to interpret any kind of biopsy or anything like that. Uh, so the treatment is pretty much the same. The only difference is if you have a skin rash that won't go away, um, what you can do for that then is topical corticosteroids. And important to avoid sun or wear sunscreen because some of these rashes can be sun sensitive. Okay, so everything's pretty much the same. Uh, this is a good uh, workup here if you've got a patient coming in with quote unquote weakness, okay? Uh, and this is a sort of a differential for quote-unquote weakness, but it always helps to get a full history, full physical, and know what else is there because weakness by itself is a tremendously long differential. 
Inclusion body myositis is quite a bit less common. Um, the big thing here is inclusion, bo inclusion body myositis tends to affect the distal muscles first and then can move proximal. Remember that uh, dermato and polymyositis do not affect the distal muscles. Those are preserved. Um, so what you'll notice with dermato and polymyositis, you ask them, okay, what can you do? And an old lady might tell you, oh, well, I can knit and I can sew and I can type and I can use my phone. With inclusion body myositis, because this affects the quads and the finger flexors, they're going to have a hard time doing those things. So they may say, I can't use my phone. I, maybe I can comb and I can get up from a seated position, but I'm having a hard time texting or I'm having a hard time sewing or I'm having a hard time typing. Um, the symptoms, it's just this insidious weakness here. So the, the way it comes on is very similar to dermato and polymyositis, but with IBM, it tends to affect the distal muscles. It's also more rare. They can also have decreased tendon reflexes. So that's another thing to look out for. The workup is the same. So CPK, uh, if that comes back positive, biopsy the muscle. Workup, like I said, it's the same. Um, so nothing new to learn there. Um, unfortunately for IBM, uh, there's really nothing we can do about it. So it's pretty much symptomatic management. It is not deadly, though. Sometimes this gets confused for ALS um, just because of the weakness and affects smaller muscles first. That's pretty common with ALS. The muscle biopsy will definitively tell you the difference. And then this is everything we talked about.